Mm. Still are sick. How you doing, kids? All right, we're gonna talk. It's gonna be. Is this gonna be a boring economic lesson? Because uh, economics has gotten enough of a bad reputation for boring people who are economists that decide to go teach instead of advance the most interesting study in the world and explain that to uh, everyday people why economics is the most uh, interesting study in the world. But uh, we're going to do an economics also that's going to be practical. It's going to be useful. It's going to be very helpful. And it is the word wealth. Many people like capital. Uh, you say, well, what does the capital mean? Well, sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's equipment. I don't know. And you never explain it. And then you like watch the news and say, what are they talking about capital? I don't get it. What is, it? What is this all about? Well, wealth is one of those same words where... Obviously, nobody in high school or college bothers to explain to the average person what wealth means in terms of uh, common vocabulary, standard parlance amongst uh, normal people. And economists all know what it is. Hee hee, wealth, oh, we know what wealth is, but you know, hee hee, look how cool we are. Yeah. So I'm going to explain what wealth is because I think uh, economists fail in this huge regard, and then we don't explain this very critical it is fundamental to all of economics because that's all economics is about is wealth if you fail to convey that vocabulary term to, to regular people um you lose them because you're talking about oh, the capital and the wealth transfers people are like hey i'm gonna go watch miley ray syphilis so there you go so let's talk about what wealth is uh most people think economics is about money or commerce or business and that has nothing to do with it and the reason why is that money has no value unto itself. I'm sure that, hopefully, I presume, somebody in your point in life has grabbed the paper dollar bill and said, look at this $20 bill. What is this worth? It's worth nothing. And so I think everybody at least intuitively understands that to a certain level. But it's what that $20 can get you. Now, this is a very important distinction to make. Everyone thinks it's money that's very important. It is not money. Why do you crave money? I remember one time, um, me and a buddy of mine were walking down Washington Avenue Bridge, and someone must have like dropped their wallet or something, because like all of a sudden, like these dollar bills started blowing past us with the wind, and we scrambled and beat the shit out of each other to go and get pick up these dollar bills. Now, why is it? Why did we scramble on a, on a unconscious, immediate, Darwinistic mad dash? Why did we start scrambling to pick up those paper dollars? Well, here, here's the reason why. Those dollars were nothing of value unto themselves. It's the fact that it would save us time, our life. Like, that's free time. We're picking us free life. That's why there was such a visceral, immediate, Darwinistic reaction to go and grab that money, because that was getting extra life to us in a, in a economic, and almost very literal sense. Because someone else had to get... That was somebody else's time. Obviously, somebody uh, that was somebody else's money. It wasn't ours. We didn't do anything to earn it. But in literally stealing it, although there was no claimant nearby, uh, and literally taking that money, we took that person's time, and now what could we do with it? We could buy stuff. And this is the key thing to understand about wealth. The success, the richness, the wealth of a nation is not determined by money. It is determined by how much stuff it can produce. It's stuff. It's goods and services. See, Money doesn't have any value unto itself. It just sits there and you can use it to buy things with. But it is the things that we can buy that do two things. Enhance or extend our lives. That's what it does. That, that's all economics is all about. So, for example, well, not for example, take everything you look at. Like right now, if you look behind me, there's a wall. I'm trying to look at the video. There's like an old Miller Life sign. There's some art up on the wall. There's a bra up here. I don't use it. But, you know, somebody... <laughs> I might play it, you know, but hey, you know. anyway, it has nothing to do with money. The true wealth of a nation is the amount of stuff that we can produce and consume. So there's basics like food, clothing, shelter. Okay, you got to get those out of the way, but then everything else is pretty much a luxury item there forth. Fancy cars, video games, books, um, sushi, martinis. Uh, girl, you know, it's not physical items, too. A lot of the girls are in the services, getting their pedicures, the manicures. Uh, you could even say men, for our services, go prostitution. There you go. That's wealth. That's stuff. It is anything that enhances or improves or extends your life. And that is what economics is all about. Now, think about that. It has nothing to do with the money, so monetary policy could literally be thrown out the window. I know there's some inflationary or deflationary effects, but let's throw that out. 
What determines how successful and rich a nation is? It's the ability to produce stuff. It's the ability to produce wealth, not in a monetary dollar sense, although we measure it in that. It's how much stuff can we produce. So if you want to know what the key to success is, how do you become wealthy? How do you amass riches? You have to produce something of value. You have to produce wealth. You have to produce stuff. Now, this becomes very interesting. What country on the planet produces stuff? China, India, and to a lesser extent, Brazil, Russia, and some other, call them second, maybe first world countries. What do we produce in the United States? We don't really produce a lot of stuff, do we? I know we make services, like a movie is a stuff, movie is a service. It's not a tangible thing, but it's a service. We do produce some stuff, we produce some really good fighter planes, we produce some good weapons. Uh, we, we do have an industrial base, but by and large, the United States doesn't produce as much stuff as other countries. And in the end, this is why China is getting wealthier and we are at best stagnating. So the question then becomes, okay, how do I produce stuff? How do we amass wealth? How do I personally, well, if you want to amass wealth, you have to produce wealth. You have to produce stuff and it has to be stuff that people want. And this is a very important point to make. Because if it were to be up to me by my estimation, I'd say 70% of you kids out there who are going to college have absolutely no desire to produce stuff. Nothing. You have no desire to produce any kind of wealth. You are going to become the liberal arts majoring idiots. I'm going to become a teacher. What do teachers produce? Now, you'll immediately argue, well, teachers produce education for the future. No, you don't. If your education is shit, like most public education is, you're not producing anything. You're producing a bunch of fucking idiot kids that are coming out of school. Just like you're a fucking idiot kid, you're what? We're going to take fucking idiot kids at the age of 18 who didn't learn jack shit. And then after four years of giving them more leftist fucking bullshit brainwashing, we're going to send them back to the schools as public school teachers at 22 to teach other idiot brainwashing. What do you, what do you think the product of the pro, uh, product? What do you think America is so like fucking lowly rank compared to all these other countries, like second world countries that like beat us in math and statistics and everything? All right. So teaching is just one example. Social work, what do you do? You don't produce anything. You don't. All you social workers, you don't. You respond to problems. Problems that you're not going to solve. There's no production in the end. You never turn these kids' lives around. Okay? You, you're not. A lot, a lot of people would say, oh, well, the police do the same thing. They respond to problems, but aren't they? Pre yeah, they provide protection. Social workers don't even provide that. Then what else? We got professors. All you worthless fucking vermin. Oh, there's a special place in hell for you, along with child molesters and people who talk in the theater. You professors are so worthless. You don't produce jack shit. And if your goal is, well, I'm going to become a teacher, I'm going to become a teacher. You got the archer thing, like, I'm going to go and teach anthropology. So what? To teach future anthropology majors? So they can do what? Teach other future anthropology majors? You're parasites. You don't produce wealth. Now, to find out who produces the wealth, all you got to do is look and see what people want. It's Christmas time. Ho, ho, ho. See the little thing? Ho, ho, ho. Come up with your Christmas wish list. What do you want? Hey, you'll answer. The truth is right there. That, that's it. Right there. All of economics boils down to your Christmas wish list. I wish I had an iPad, a video game, the Xbox, a car, whatever. You make your list and then ask who produces that list. Who produces that stuff? Is it social workers? I care about children. Is it child psychologists? Is it women's studies majors? Is it I'm a black person, come worship me majors? Sorry, that's just a rib. Is it Chicano American study? No, because nobody wants your shit. Because you don't produce shit that anybody wants. And the only way anybody has to give you money is because they're forced to buy prerequisite classes and they're forced to buy your fucking academia and books. In other words, if you look at people's true soul, what do they want? What's going to give them the most utility? What's going to advance their lives the most? They will willingly go and buy what they want. They will buy the stuffs that they want. They will buy the wealth that they want. And that's usually electronics, maybe a book they really like, um, maybe some good food, some sushi, uh, whatever it is that their heart desires. I know that's a crazy concept to you leftist ty uh, tyrants out there. Like, how dare they have opinions and desire certain things, okay? Those people are going to take their money and buy what they want. And if you look at a Christmas wish, wish list, it is the most innocent and pure insight into a person's dreams and desires and what they want, what's going to make them most happy in life. 
That's wealth. That is what makes people happy. That is what makes people rich. Now, all of you who don't work in those fields, you know, you all want iPods, but you're all going to major in English. Fuck you. You all want a computer. You all want a tablet. But not, are any of you majoring in electrical engineering? Any of you in chemistry or metallurgy? Oh, no, math is tough. The math is hard. I want to be an independent woman. I want to become a teacher. I want to, I want to major in, in the feelings. Can I major in feelings? Because that's all you're doing. You're just avoiding it. You know, you're not even majoring in feelings. You're majoring in the avoidance of math. That's the new degree. That's what it is. Oh, that's brilliant. What do you have? I have a master's degree in the avoidance of math. The avoidance of science. The avoidance of rigor and challenge and, 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 and discipline and effort. That's what you got. So the question then becomes, if you're not producing stuff that people want, what are you? I don't care what your degree is. I don't care what your title is. If you're not producing things that people want and you need the government to go force people to buy your shit, you know what you are? You're a parasite. You're a motherfucking parasite. And that's what you are. Right? All you worthless liberal arts TAs and you professors who make other people take you. Know, I, why did I have to take two years of German of a foreign language? Was I ever going to go to Germany? No. Well, maybe I was, but I wasn't going to live there. We want to live in Germany. No offense to the Germans. It's just not like, oh, I want to go live in Germany. <laughs> but uh, no, I had, to, I had to take like two years of a foreign language. Why? Uh, it didn't do me any good. I didn't want to do it. That wasn't on my Christmas wish list. But it was on some politically connected cocksucking motherfucking piece of communist vermin professor scum over at the education industry, over at the government, or and I'm, I'm not I can't name not personal names, but organizational names because I got a I got a plan. I'm putting something together. You guys are very much like this. It's, it has nothing. You're not advancing society. You're not producing. You are taking from society. You're making other people spend their time and money working up the cash to pay you, so you can give them this fake fucking service that nobody ever asked for. I mean, really, you should. Everyone's bachelor's degree is really only earned in two years. It's the hurdles and the bullshits and the loops where you have to become a well-rounded person, getting your pre uh, uh, prerequisites uh, in order to get that uh, bachelor's degree. In any case, this is not one where I'm going to lecture and ridicule, although I already have, but this is one where you get to look deep into your soul if you have one, if you have the capacity or the compunction to be intellectually honest, say, do I carry my weight in society? Because you all want gas, you all want cars, you all want roads, well that requires tradesmen, engineers, chemists, metallurgists, all these other professions. You want healthcare, that requires doctors, surgeons, you know, nurses, uh, that kind of stuff. But then, magically, everyone wants to major in art, and women's studies, and English, and touchy-feely crap, and communications. What the fuck is communications? Really? Bro, communication? How the fuck do you get four years? I know there's even doctorates. How the fuck do you get an eight-year program out of that? I'm going to major in HR, business. I'm majoring in business, Sigma Sigma Phi, yeah. Hmm. Hang on, let me do this right. Can't do a business major right unless you got the right attire. Can't use that hat. Where'd my hat go? There we go. Hang on. Look. I'm even doing this. There we go. You know, like, I'm uh, measuring business? Yeah, man. Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I play bass. I used to play, like, you know, minor leagues and everything. Yeah, dude. Like, fucking, I'm going to start a business, man. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm good. my frat boys, yeah, me and my bros hang out, yeah, totally, man, like, oh, yeah, I fuck accounting, you know, that's like fucking, fucking nerd squares do that, yeah, I'm gonna major in business, yeah, my dad's pretty fucking big, he's like, uh, he's in banking, yeah, you know, fucking's got me set up, oh, what up, dad, yeah, fucking you idiots, <laughs> come goddamn politicians, and then you all wonder why there's a fucking unbalanced budget at the national level, although Barack Obama wasn't even that douchey, he, he couldn't throw a ball. I could you I imagine him throwing a ball like a girl. I just do. He just he's such an effeminate yutz. Ah anyway, what was I talking about? Um oh yeah, so well. Are you here here's the ultimate question. This isn't my opinion. This isn't this is mathematical. This is real. If you're an independent person, you are producing something of value, you're producing some kind of wealth, some kind of material or good or service that is demanded by people in a free market free of their own choice, free of their own will, and you produce it and you provide it for them. 
This could be as something as lowly as flipping burgers at McDonald's. And if you are, you know what? You're more honorable. You are doing more for society being a burger flipper at McDonald's or a janitor at McDonald's than any fucking professor in the liberal arts. Absolutely. It's not fair they're making a hundred grand and you're like stuck doing that. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. But you're actually doing something more because people willingly want a Big Mac. And you, you know, it does, it's not like you made the whole Big Mac yourself, you slaughtered the cow, but whether you're the janitor, whatever you are, as long as you're an employee at McDonald's, you're producing something that people want. So you should take pride in that. Walmart, a lot of people are like, oh, look at these poor people at Walmart. Understand, yes, I'm, I'm not saying that your wage is great, don't get me wrong, but at least working at Walmart, do you know how many people willingly come to Walmart? No one's gone there with a gun to their head like you're forced to take a fucking uh, liberal arts or an art course over at, at college. No one's forcing that down your throat like Barack Obama with health insurance. No one's doing that to you. <laughs> so, so you are producing something of value. That's the whole point. Do people willingly give up their money for it? Because if they do, that's a great, that's a compliment. When I say, look, I... I sacrifice my time. That's the only resource anybody has is their own life, their own time. I sacrifice, everybody sacrifices <coughs> their time to get money. Then they say, how am I going to spend my money, my time? And if they choose your product, that is a compliment. I think you made a really good Big Mac. I think you uh, mopped the floors very well at, at Walmart and therefore I will go here and buy these products that you in indirectly help support sell. I like your book. I'm going to buy your book. I like your dance classes. I like your um, your painting. I like whatever. So when people willingly give you their money in a free exchange, not forced by government, not forced by academia, not forced by politicians, not forced by regulations, not forced by no force. They willingly give you the money. I'm going to thank you very much, Mr. Jack Daniels. I appreciate that booze. Here's some of my time. That is a compliment. That means that your service has earned those people's times, uh, time, th their lives. They're willing to sacrifice a piece of their life for whatever product it is that you made or help make or help support. So that's how you make wealth. That's how you make money. You got to produce something that people want. Now, you know, you could be a janitor, you could flip burgers and not say there's anything wrong with that, but if you want to get like a lot more time, a lot more wealth coming your direction, then you got to do something really special. You got to really make something really great. Steve Jobs died a billionaire not by accident. He made something everybody wanted. He figured out a market. Surgeons aren't poor because they provide a very rare skill that everybody wants. They provide this wealth, this, this service that's very important. Girls at nail salons or haircutter salon type chicks, terribly sorry. Yeah, that's why you, you're paid about maybe $15, $12 an hour. And don't yell at me don't because I work as a security guard for fun on the side. I don't, really get, I don't even know what I get paid. I think I paid like what am I paid? I'm, th I'm paid anywhere between 12 to $20 an hour. I really don't know. I just use it as like downtime to go and write my books. Um, but that's because anyone can become a security guard. Or almost anyone can become a security guard. It's nothing special. It's nothing unique. That's why, you know, there's plenty of people out there. Not everyone can become a brain surgeon. Not everyone can cut people open and not pass out with the blood spurting all over the place. Like, eh, like that. So, uh, and anyways, that's the, the primary lesson here. Wealth. What determines the strength and the power and the productive capacity and the happiness and the statistical uh, economic enjoyment of life is the amount of stuff a country can produce. Everything, food, clothing, shelter, video games, wiener dogs, you name it, everything. And if you design a society around producing stuff, you're going to have more stuff to enjoy. Prices go down, real prices, not to get into a discussion about inflation. But your standards of living go up. If you develop policies that focus on the production of stuff, that is going to increase your wealth and your happiness and your standards of living. What do we got today in the United States? Let's pay people to be parasites and not work. But that's a political aside. But hopefully this gave you a, a little bit of an idea. Hopefully it gave you a, a lesson about what economics is all about. And hopefully, and really, if you just follow that one principle, stuff, you're going to understand economics more than Paul Krugman ever will. Because he's, he's a... <laughs> Slam on Paul. He doesn't even know who I am. He won't even care. But you're going to understand more than most economists do. Because most economists, they look up Keynesianism. It's like, wow, like we just lower the interest rate, man, and everything happens. Like, dude, all right, man, awesome. And where's my hat? Nah, I won't do the Keynesian frat boy. So, all right, that's all we got. Toodles.